My name is Mary Gaffner. I'm with Qualcomm, and we're here today to talk about our RPA journey. I am the IT project manager and the lead for our RPA Center of Excellence. Today, I'm joined by Jennifer Taylor. She's a senior manager in our finance area. Also joined by Scott Downey today. He's also in finance. For our RPA journey, it started about two years ago, and we were initially looking for ways to reduce costs. Uh, we wanted to be more efficient in our business activities. Uh, we wanted to really reduce the manual tasks that our employees were doing. For us, this application and the environment that we've set up has been a cross-functional team with both business and IT. We have developers that are both in the U.S. here in San Diego, and then we also have a development team in Hyderabad, India. On the business side, we have business partners that are the leads in each of the areas. So there's a business lead in the finance organization, that's Jen. We have a, a lead in the accounting area. And then we will also add leads, um, they're business champions really, in other areas as well as we bring on additional areas. About a year ago, um, we realized that in order to really scale the program, we needed to implement and support um, the federated development model. So we initially um, were just doing all of the development in, in IT and then um, realized that the federated model is really what's gonna help us scale to be able to allow the business partners to do their own development and really um, be able to utilize this to, to help them as much as possible. So we have those developers in the business areas as well. Uh, we have a fairly extensive training program in which they need to uh, complete. And the IT team helps the business uh, in their federated development. So that's the background on our COE. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Jen now, and she's going to talk about the partnership that IT and the business have. Hello, everyone. My name is Jen Taylor, and I am the Finance Transformation Lead for Qualcomm. So I'm going to talk today about the RPA rollout and our expansion program. So as Mary just mentioned, is our deployment is very critical between our partnership with IT. So for us to be able to push out the type of processes that we do have and be able to be successful for a governancing process, it's key to have this partnership with IT that controls our center of excellence. So Mary mentioned just a little bit about our RPA journey, but I'm gonna just talk a little bit more about it. Obviously you can see here on the screen is that starting in 2017, so a couple of years back, as we started our proof of concept. So this is where we found a third party that helped us actually figure out what the governance model looks like and to help us figure out the processes that we should first start with. So that was 2017. Moving into 2018 was what we called phase one. And this is accounting where we actually had four processes that were released into production. Now that was a help through the third party that we went ahead and did hire. So 2019, we have a couple of phases that were happening. We expanded more within accounting, we did more within finance, and then expanding obviously into IT and compliance. So at this point, that was 20 processes within 2019 that we went ahead and released into production as well. As Mary mentioned, it moved towards this federated model. So that was about a year ago that we started doing the federated model. And this is one way obviously that we're helping to expand our program and to provide more value. So by the end of our fiscal 2020, which is in September, we'll have another 20 processes within production. So at that point, there'll be at least 45 processes and obviously expanding quickly due to our federated model. So now I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Scott that's going to talk about our developer type of model. Uh, thanks, Jen. Hi, everyone. I've been with Qualcomm for about six years now. I'm one of the federated or citizen developers for our robotics process automation here at Qualcomm. As you've heard a little previously, that means that I help develop processes to automate, but I'm not in IT. I'm a financial analyst. Uh, I've always had an interest in programming, so I was identified as a candidate to be a developer early on in the process. I have a passion for automating and simplifying processes, so it seemed like a good fit. I'm here because I want to give everyone an idea of the experience I've had with RPA and automation anywhere from a perspective of a federated developer. Uh, we started out with uh, training sessions on how to use AA from a consulting agency called Norelify. Uh, these sessions consisted of a mix between in-person and online training for approximately two weeks. This proved very useful as there are a lot of commands in AA and it's 
easy to get lost in all of the different things you can do. Uh, so it really helped me understand how you can use these actions to accomplish the task you're trying to automate and establish best practices. Just being able to understand basic program flow and process flow, things like conditionals, loops, variables, that's all it really took. Once we finished training, uh, we started getting more involved in identifying good use cases to implement RPA. From a developer's perspective, it was good to be involved at this stage since it gave a good idea of the underlying process itself and what makes a process a good candidate for automation. In my experience, the development has been very fun and easy to do, and I think the most enjoyable part of uh, this whole process. Uh, the support from our internal intelligence automation center has also been very helpful as a federated developer. They've helped establish what kind of documentation we'll need and templates for them. They also help set up coding style guides and best practices. I'm finding so far that if you've developed the process well and using best practices, it hasn't been very difficult to maintain and doesn't really take a lot out of my day. Things like uh, creating a config file for your prod and test environments, using variables appro appropriately and not hard coding data, and keeping the repositories updated have all helped me a lot. I've also set up my processes to email me if it fails for any reason. So if there's uh, any issue, I know about it immediately. And uh, any error in event logging that I've done uh, is sent to me. So that's really helped, it helps me identify where things went wrong. Thanks, Scott. That was very informative. Uh, and finally, we're just going to continue learning. Um, there are some new features that are part of Automation Anywhere software. So we're looking to be able to start using those and also um, upgrade and uh, look for other areas of automation as well. So that about sums it up. Uh, we appreciate your time today. Thank you.